All right, in this video, we'll be looking at environmental effects on the phenotype. This is actually going to be a fairly short video um, because there's not a whole lot of content in this particular section, and that's just fine. Um, and you can see that I have exchanged content for blurry pictures. So, yeah. So this idea of phenotypic, phenotypic plasticity, uh, it's a big, big idea. And it's basically the idea that environmental factors can influence gene expression. Think of the word plasticity it has to do with um, like stretchiness, you know, think about it that way. And so if you think of a phenotype, it is the expression of a gene. So phenotypic plasticity is going to have to do with the ability of a phenotype to vary depending on the environmental influences on that gene. All right. And so as environmental influence changes, so can the phenotypic expression change. And that is basically what this idea is. Environmental factors can change uh, phenotypic expression quite a bit. You can see here, these are Himalayan rabbits. If they're reared at 20 degrees or less, they have the black tips. And if they're above 30, then apparently they have um, just all white. I'm not a rabbit raiser, but I'm sure this is true. But these other things, I do have a little bit more in, uh, inf information on. So another example are uh, hydrangeas. These are popular flowers in our part of the world. And based on the acidity of the soil, the phenotype of the plant will actually change. That, that color comes from nutrients in the soil and the acidity affects that and so it can directly affect the color of the plant and so you can see there on that chart depending you can actually manipulate the color of your hydrangeas by manipulating the ph of the soil which i think is is pretty fascinating there's a gene that codes for hydrangea color and that hydrangea color is expression is going to be plastic based on the pH. And that's kind of how you would think about it. And so this idea that environment affects the expression of that. Another example is stomata density. So stomata are these little holes in leaves. And the purpose of the holes is, is twofold. They allow water to leave the leaves. Um, which allows water to come up from the roots via capillary action, which is an important part of leaves. Um, and they also allow CO2 in. And so, and because CO2 is necessary for photosynthesis to occur. And so these little mouths, you can see they look like little mouths. They open up and allow CO2 in. So if there's a low, and there's a gene that codes for stomatas, right? So if there's low CO2, the leaf will make more stomata with the idea of getting more CO2 in, right? If there's more little mouths, then perhaps they can eat more total CO2. If there's a normal level of CO2, or if there's an oversaturated amount ability of CO2, the phenotypic expression of the number of stomata will change, or the stomata density will change based upon the amount of CO2 in the air. So again, the gene hasn't changed. The DNA hasn't changed. The expression of that gene does based on environmental influences. One that we can understand a little more from our own species has to do with average height. So if you look 1896, the average height of an individual um, was somewhere between 150 to 163 centimeters based on this particular um, graph. And if you fast forward, 100 years, that has risen to 160 to 172 or so, all right? And so what has happened in those years um, in order to have an increase of height? Well, if you think about the last 100 and now 25 years since this has occurred, the differences in the way that uh, food is manufactured the way that food is delivered across the country, the fact that people don't have individual farms and that people can just go to the store and get food, um, the access to medical care, and all of those things have increased over the last 125 years. Thus, you have more healthy people. People are, are um, generally going to have 
of greater bone density, greater musculature, which is going to allow for more height. Has the human, has the human population evolved in the last 125 years to have taller individuals or has any sort of environmental uh, changes caused us to have to grow taller in order to adapt to those changes? No, it's the fact that we have better nutrition now uh, that has caused us to grow taller. The same genes are in play. Environmental environmental conditions have changed, i.e. better food. And so we are taller than we used to be.